I was very touched the first time I read in, in the early part of the text that a teacher is entitled to devotion if he is devoted. And Jesus saying, it's my devotion to you that entitles me to devotion. So there was this real sense that devotion was very important. And I do think that what you're describing is that there are a number of spiritual paths. It sounds like you lived in a community that was very, very, very aware of the importance of devotion. Mm -hmm. And there was no doubting that. It was very, very important. And so, I have found that I wanted to live a very devotional life, but to me, devotion to spirit, when I started to get clearer and clearer that, that the Holy Spirit was not a form, was not, did not, could take on many forms, could use all forms towards attaining an experience, uh, an expansive experience. And then, even about Jesus, you know, we were talking about the, the part in the book where it says the man was an illusion, and that can be kind of a striking thing too, if you're coming from a place of, of even seeing a historical figure, whether it's Krishna, or Buddha, or Jesus, or Mother Teresa, or whoever, they're all bodies, and they're all images. They, they definitely, bodies with images, and, and to aim that de devotion, you know, at a, an image. Um, the more that I got into the Course, the more I was aware of that old biblical um, teaching, you know, actually the, one of the commandments in the Bible is, hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. And when I was growing up, I was thinking of like totem poles and statues and things as graven images. And then at some point it dawned on me, the whole cosmos, <laughs> everything. <laughs> it's like, oh that's what he's talking about. You mean, oh, we, oh, the graven images of the entire time-space cosmos, you know, it's bigger than totem poles, you know, it's, it's holding any image before the abstract love of God and, and believing that that image has any existence in and of itself. A leaf on a tree could become an idol if you, if you conceptually hold it as a leaf and you pull it out of the tapestry of the whole and all of a sudden you pull one thing out and then suddenly that's the definition of an idol to me. So, so admittedly, the Course, and my practice with the Course, <coughs> went in a pathway that was in a direction that was very, very different from, we might say, more traditional Eastern or Hindu practices with gods and goddesses and, and devotion to teachers and gurus and saints and so forth. One time I, I had a friend from uh, India, Jaya, and she came to uh, one of my gatherings, it was in Plano, Texas, uh, outside of Dallas, and she was dressed in the Indian, you know, dress and so forth, and she came up, and most people will come up and, with either like a handshake or arms outstretched, you know, for a hug. That's been generally my experience all around the world or in certain countries, Belgium, France, it's the kisses on the cheeks, what is it? Three kisses, two kisses, one, one kiss. Belgium. Belgium is how many? One. One. Okay. France but is one. France Portugal is two. It's French, it's several. I would go to France and, oh my gosh, this is, what, what culture is this? My God. Kiss, 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 kiss. It was a little different. Well, anyway, Jaya comes up to me and she immediately went for the feet of David. She immediately, I mean, I, it's the first time in my life where somebody has come up upon first greeting and, and the lips went for the feet. But I got her by the shoulders before they could, the lips could arrive. <laughs> and I just smiled and I just, just she came up because I got her shoulders before the lips got down there, all the way down to the feet and I softly brought her up and I just smiled at her and I said, so there's no need for kissing of the feet. 
And she said, oh, and it is my tradition. It is my tradition, you know, just was explaining. That was very much like you're describing this and that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've got nothing against feet kissing, uh, one way or the other, actually. But, <laughs> but, but I do know that the feeling that I have inside is that the Course and Jesus are really leading us to an experience of perfect equality. We may use words like oneness, but on earth, perfect equality is really what the miracle is, is giving us. It's in an actual experience, and, and it has to come from inside of us. We, you know, our, our rituals won't get us there. It's, it's through the, the actual practice of putting it into practice with everyone we meet, literally practicing with thousands and thousands of encounters to practice that perfect equality. Really let it be given to us. Show me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Show me how to experience the perfect equality with my brothers and sisters. Where none is higher, none is lower. None walks ahead, none walks behind. You walk hand in hand, side by side, as perfect equals. So, I think when you mention the word devotion, I, I do feel like that's very important for me. It's been very important in my life. And I would literally wake up to start the day and be in that devotional frame of mind, wanting to give myself over, kind of like the, the workbook lesson, what would you have me do, you know, where would you have me go, what would you have me say, and to whom. I love that openness, like, here, here I am, Lord, this is my day. I give it to you, to use however you would use it for. And it's a little bit different than, than actually you know, having specific people or things in mind. We actually, in our communities, use devotional projects, as you know, probably from the devotional, because they emphasize collaboration, where there's a project that's given and we, we want to get into the collaborative vibe with it, as opposed to kind of the egocentric thing of, I'll do what I want to do, I'll do it on my own, I'll do it on my own time, I'll do it whenever I want to do it, you know, that's the kind of me, myself, and I, that's the mini-me that, that wants to do it its own individualized personal way. We want to be lifted out of that. I think Mother Teresa felt that too when she emphasized service. You know, she's, you know, let's, let's practice seeing Jesus in everyone that we meet. Let's just treat everybody for the sake of it like Jesus. Like, like whoever we meet, doesn't matter whether they're poor, wealthy, whatever, whatever, let's just go out in the streets today and, and meet everybody like we're meeting Jesus. I think that's another attempt at devotion, but she was taking it away from like a particular person. Mm -hmm. And she was like saying, practice it with everyone that you meet. Uh, and also, I, I feel like even with the Course, it's a, it's a self-study book, but there's, you know, a text and a workbook and a manual, and, and it does give you instructions on how to use it. And so for me, that was a devotional thing as well, was giving myself over to it, saying, okay, I'm going to use this. It's, it's been given to me, and I'm going to use it, I'm going to practice it, I'm going to study it, I'm going to do the lessons, and do them as best as I can, I'm going to follow the instructions, and so forth. That takes a commitment and a devotion as well. But it never per se was to like a physical teacher or guru. I felt this presence of Jesus with me. I felt Jesus speaking to me. I felt Jesus instructing me and I had a devotion to listen and follow that instruction. But even that it wasn't, I wasn't getting apparitions and it wasn't like in my bed and then a little you know, Jesus appearing in the room or the foot of the bed. It wasn't visual and perceptual, it was like this inner devotion to follow that presence as it was guiding me and directing me. And I do sense that now there, as this body is used even in travel or in communities and those kind of symbols, that, that there is a devotion, but but it's more to the presence 
and it's more to linking in and joining in and connecting around guidance and praying together and all those kind of things than it is specifically to a person. You know, we, we don't really encourage devotion to persons. We, we try to encourage devotion to presence. And then, if it's practical, if, if it could be helpful, if someone comes with a willing heart and wants to serve, and they say, can I, can I help with this, can I help with that, they're just eager and willing to help out in any way they can, it comes back to prayer. We, we pray, and we really pray and pray and pray and feel things out, and let that be a way for those that are coming to channel their devotion. Because they're very eager, they're like little puppy dogs with the tails wagging, you know, and they're just like, I'm here, I'm here, how can I serve, how can I serve? And then we have to really pray because that it's like how can they be used for the service of the whole, not in the service of people. So we don't really are, want people serving people, it's more people getting in touch with the inner flow and the, the guidance and the prayer and, and stepping into that because that's for the whole. So how is worship different than devotion? Yeah, I, I would say <clears throat> the worshiping God is wonderful, but God doesn't have an ego to experience worship the way most people worship, you know, where it's like, Lord, 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 and, and it's all these words, but God doesn't have an ego by which to hear, take in the words. <laughs> so how could I worship God other than practicing forgiveness and trying to be as God created me? So that I, I wasn't trying to be something other than God created. It wouldn't be very worshipful mm -hmm. <laughs> if God says, I'm creating you as a flowing, loving, trusting, open spirit, and then you go off on an egoic tangent, and then try to egoically praise and worship the being that created you as a spirit. It would be more, how, how can I be humble? How can I be truly helpful? How can I be of service? How can I lead a devotional life to peace of mind? Even something like that. That would be the way to worship a creator that created you peaceful. To be peaceful would be the most worshipful, <laughs> the worshipful thing that you could do. And you see how different that is from the adulation sometimes and all the stuff that's heaped onto God as if God's a personality. <coughs> and it's like the more that you verbally worship the personality, the more the personality goes, very good, my beloved one. <laughs> now say, now do 20,000 more Hail Marys and, and you know, prostrate yourself and bow down and do this and this and this and this. God isn't really like a personality that likes a lot of praise. In fact, if you're peaceful, then God is praised. <laughs> and to the extent that you're upset, that's not praising God. You know, that's, that's praising another <laughs> one in place. As far as the Eastern system with ashrams and gurus, you know, I think there was one point when, when somebody said it to me and then they typed it out and I just, my eyes just lit upon it and they typed out G-E-E-Y-O-U-A-R-E-Y-O-U, capital Y-O-U. G U R U. And it was like, it, it gave me a whole different perspective on guru disciple. It was what, if you read all the Eastern teachings, that's the value of the guru. The value of focus on the guru and devotion is to see the self, is to see the self beyond the body, beyond the personality where you get so, so to speak, lost in the devotion and lost in that humbleness and lost in that service and lost in that humility, true humility, that, that the ego disappears. And I do feel like that is another valid pathway to God. I, can, I could feel it 
you know, with the presence there. If you, if you are devoted to one who seems to be very, very devoted, then it's, you're on the right track. <laughs> Not the kind of guru like in Kumari, you know, if you saw the movie Kumari where, you know, he's so disillusioned with all the Eastern gurus and all the Western gurus that he puts on the robe and he goes to pretend that he's a guru. And then suddenly as the movie goes along, the spirit starts pouring through him and actual devotees start coming up and actual devotion starts happening. Because the spirit, even with him having the pretense of pretending to be a guru, the spirit uses it just as much, and and I could feel the love. It was so authentic. So I I certainly acknowledge that that the devotion really depends on where your heart is. If your heart is is really clear on what the devotion is, then I think it just takes you all the way. It just takes you to an egoless state. And I feel that's something we've just talked about lately, because when you're ready, I think, I've just noticed that there are those that, that come that are beautiful reflections of devotion, is the best way I can say it. It's not so much that you can see it in a personal way, as devoted persons, but if you see devoted reflections of your mind, and, and they start showing up and showing up more and more and more, it's a wonderful experience. You know, because it's, it's a shared experience, it's not, it's not personal in any way. Yeah. For many years my prayer was just make it obvious. Then there was a sense of like, like diving very, very deep with something, I didn't know what, and the course was the what. Mm -hmm. It was literally given, and I could feel it. It was like a, a marriage, a connection there, like, oh, I cried out for help a pathway that I could pour myself completely into, without hesitation and without reservation. And then, when it appeared, it was more of a feeling like, oh, great, I have no excuses, I, it was kind of like, you know, really a perfect match. And I felt that I could fully pour myself into it, use it as an oracle, use it totally give myself in a devotional way with it. And then at one point I popped it open and it said, this course has, offers you everything that you need. Oh, hello. That's just beautiful. I just thought, okay, I'm fully, I really am going for this now. I'm, you know, I, and, and I just, it, was, it turned into a devotional life, just diving into it. And now it's not so much any book or anything. But it could be, you know, it just goes deeper and deeper into just, it's just a living presence, a living experience that... Mm -hmm.